can be more complicated than that. We only have maintain two accounts, the central bank account and the account we maintain with JP Morgan in New York. So who else receives money? Which other account does money go to? Because they can, they, the government must be able to aggregate all these things together and put it back into the federation yeah, account. At the, at the end of the day, some heads must roll. But let's look at the, Im no, no. the impact of this um, disconnect between the agencies of government yeah. on the nation as, as a country, the image internationally, and even within. I think concerning the agencies, I'm sure that the presidency and the secretary to the federal government is more competent to deal with those issues. I'll deal with one major problem. Imagine you're a foreign investor, and you just heard that Nigeria has lost seven trillion of his money, he can't account for it. Do you know so many things that are predicated on these revenue projections, our survey we're phone, our credit standing, our ratings are ranking? And then you come back on a Wednesday, and then you hear that, oh, sorry, it wasn't seven trillion, it was just two trillion missing. Either way, something is still missing. Mm -hmm. When in the first place, who do we believe? Just imagine the US Fed make a statement like that, and it doesn't become something that you want to quickly trigger yourself upon. There are very substantial damage that has been done. And we must not lose sight of that. But the real damage we are doing is that we are not taking it very seriously to understand that we can continue this way. We can continue not knowing which figure is there. But we cannot just pin it and say, OK, fine. Maybe the CBN should have been more conscious. But guess what? Within the context of what happened, the CBN acted because it was alarmed. Was it a false alarm? The fact that it wasn't reconciled and they said we knew where the money was tells me it wasn't a false alarm. Uh, you follow me? It wasn't a first Then when you come out and say, oh, this is where the money was, how come the CBN does not know? Or are you therefore saying that the central bank is an incompetent institution? I beg to disagree. That's the whole purpose of the beauty of this country, whereby you have a central bank that's independent. That can say, I don't have the figures. Oh, you, the, the, did you see the independence in all of this correspondence? Oh, but of course. But of course, the NAPC therefore, therefore reports back to the government and said, no, we know where the figures are. Then the problem is this. CBN, Ministry of Finance, then said, look, all these monies, where do they go? And that's why you see, uh, I think, they're doing what they ought to have done in September. What do you smell here? Because uh, before now, one wouldn't uh, dare see any uh, head I think of the any, no, any, the no any resolution, The no resolution of the problem uh, I mean, earlier on okay. gave room to a fact that if such a letter was written and in two months no decision or resolution was taken, whoever did the, 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 the task of releasing it in public for whatever purpose, therefore had the impetus. For if it was, it was resolved, that letter is of no consequence. And there are countless of letters that have gone on between the president and the central bank governor. We need ministers to the to their reporting head. But if that had been resolved, maybe sometime in October, the fact that I'll ask Lamman's question more specifically. Do you smell it cover up? Cover up in terms of what? I mean, because right now what we're seeing is a reconciliation. They're saying we know where the money is. Uh, we're not being told anything. Uh, we can, uh, I could that's hardly the, that's hear the what the Syrian governor was that's saying. That's the beauty of having people like you continue to ask those questions. And I think you should continue to ask the questions. I will not go as far as say there's a cover up. There's a responsibility being exercised here. And that is a responsibility that those principal officers of the government must come together and sit down with themselves and understand that this money is not, in, is not like quote unquote missing. We do just have an accounting reconciliation problem. We believe that CBN you acted thinking because you did not have the information available to you. But we then have the information and we realize that we have a gap within how we reconcile and how we deal with our figures. And as such, these men are standing up and being responsible. But then we still can have legitimate and should ask legitimate questions. For example, I've asked a couple myself here. If this money is in those places, how come the CBN does not know? One. Two, how do we have a situation whereby it seemingly appears that the central bank does not understand the workings of the NNPC? Three, which other accounts does the NNPC operate that is not known to the central bank? Again, if you turn it to the other side and look at how NNPC operates, NNPC conducts its affairs in a way that is best known to him. You have a minister of uh, petroleum who basically has to, and they report directly to who? The president. I think that between the two of them, Nigeria has just seen the challenge you have. Your biggest revenue earner and your central bank cannot even harmonize figures. Let's talk about the PIB quickly here. Mm. You know, we've always talked about PIB, PIB, with all of those uh, anomalies. Uh, 
and a brouhaha concerning unremitted funds. Well, I think they were truly careful in using that word, unremitted, not that it was actually missing. Perhaps maybe it was hovering somewhere. But uh, now that, uh, well, we just realized that uh, some of those uh, funds hovering, uh, we actually kept somewhere or are actually sitting pretty cool somewhere. Would the PI bill have been able to solve all of these oh, anomalies? By the way, by the way, one other part of which I did not mention is that, and which is uh, uh, what the CBN would have to uh, learn from it as well, is that there were some of those monies that were not necessarily, or some of those crude lifting that were not necessarily NMPCs. Do, do, do you understand? So legitimately, NMPC couldn't have been remitted money that was not due back to you, to you. So NMPC couldn't have done that. The real argument why the PIB is being spoken about is that Nigeria's, the, the level of accretion to the foreign exchange uh, to Nigeria's reserve is depleting. Nigeria's share of these oil transactions is actually dropping. Maybe you don't get the point very clearly. Nigeria's share of revenue for most of these oil transactions is actually dropping from the crude oil sales. That's a fundamental issue. And if you know that we moved away from, let me get it right, we moved away from joint ventures to production sharing arrangements, we moved into some actual different aspects of the oil gas, but the share of money coming to federal government because of the investment the other parties are making, our level of earnings is actually dropping. <laughs> Let me break it down for you very well. Your level of contribution from your usual contracts which you're getting is dropping from the signed agreements. And so what we're hoping is that if you do a petrol uh, 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 pass the PIB, you may solve all, some of not all, some of all these challenges, and then you then understand that you just at the level of collecting revenue. So you allow private sector participation to be in there, and you can stop all this, I didn't know who should do this, I didn't know who did that, because it's a very complex uh, operation. And so what we're saying is, and I think one of the fallouts of what has gone on today is that it then brings to bear upon everybody that it is important that we deal with this oil, uh, oil, oil business once and for all. The fact that we know that revenue is dropping from this, maybe it's actually we start investing in focusing more on our gas and doing much more in terms of the gas output. Is it high time we start going into the shale gas production and understand what is going to happen? Again, you turn around and see, go back to 2012. Most of the contracts that were structured together uh, um, um, was that the oil prices were going in Nigeria. And you had Tunji talking about that. CPM was probably expecting more money. Are you following me? So then they raise the questions over there. Um, but that, but, but that, but for me, I was also going to ask you quickly, though. I mean, what this, what you should also, we should also be expecting in terms of transparency, because it also points to that. Uh, what are you looking to see as the years go by? But but it's a good development. Like I said, it's a good development. It's a good development that they've now told us where the money is. They've now told us where the transactions are. We can stay on it. You get what I'm saying. You can stay on it and ask for more information. For example, I, I raised three questions which we would like to stay on and to get more answers to. It is hopeful that uh, we hope that before the year runs out, they will resolve where the 10.8 billion is, and then they will communicate back to you. But to your point as to that communication from the central bank, I feel that it just made matters worse rather than help it there. Well, Femi Awayami, CEO, Prochair, many thanks for coming. Thank you very much.